How's it going guys? Surprise, surprise, we're back out here again. Doing more work on the Honda, not driving again. Well, it is driving, but like not driving it off-road or anything again yet. I've just been down here doing some other little things today. Um, so I've run some wire for my fog light grill. Gone ahead and tidied up my wiring over on the uh, firewall. One thing that I kind of fucked up months and months and months ago. So this door in the US model has a little module that has an empty space for a wire that you can run to your fuse box for your indicators so that when you lock and unlock the car it flashes them. I haven't done it yet because fun fact, just because it's on the left side of a left hand drive does not mean it will be on the left side of a right hand drive. So I'm going to take that door panel off to do it and I want the wire before I do it anyway. So I'll probably do that when I go and wire up the rest of my stuff because that's something I've from day one absolutely needed for my car. I really, really hate the fact that the indicators don't go off when you lock and unlock it. Interestingly enough, I thought I was done with the issues with the locking nuts on these hard race arms, but the inner ones have now started to come loose, so I've readjusted those and thread locked them. So yeah, that's a little bit annoying. I have noticed excessive noise coming from these two. You can literally see from the angle these are on caused by the um, toe issues that I have in my alignment that these bushings are getting where where they shouldn't be that's obviously causing some noise um, so I really need to get those toe arms sorted um, just other little things I went ahead and washed the car with a power washer today so all of plasti dip that was on this is off um, all the plasti dip that was on this is off so that's why that looks a little bit different the car is the cleanest it's been for a while. As I mentioned in my 1000 subs video, my airbox did not come together how I wanted. So really all I have to do with this one is uh, cut out this acrylic lid. I still have a sheet of acrylic in the garage. Um, I have a power source, so it's gonna be a much less painful experience now. Um, but yeah, I just need to do that. You can even see there where some of my um, weld spatters kind of burnt the lid. I don't really care, this was just to get it sealed, um, so yeah, but I just wanted to give an update on that. Fun little fact though about the state of the car as well, with the clutch and all that, because that has been my biggest issue. The car has now done over 7,500 kilometers since I've had the clutch done, which exceeds either of the previous two clutches I had. The standard that was supposed to be the heavy duty clutch that was put in incorrectly, um, and then the heavy duty that was put in correctly, um, because I ordered it myself. Um, and then yeah, now again another heavy duty XCD clutch, this time with my master cylinder actually having been replaced, seems to have done the trick, because it's still driving like an absolute beast. I've probably done about as much off-roading as I did on the last clutch, because I really didn't get to get much in before it started slipping. I think I got only maybe like two or three trips, so I've, yeah, I've definitely done more than that this time, so yeah, and I've driven further, it's probably had a harder life, so I'm pretty confident that, um, yeah, the master cylinder was absolutely what was trashing my car. So, lucky me, these came in the mail today, the whole day after I got my tires, and at first glance, it actually seems these are about three or four mil shorter. This is lined up with the lower one and then this is lined up with the upper one. You can see that the bushing sleeve is actually quite a distance um, inwards from the factory one to the hard race which is exactly what I needed. Now I've gone ahead and used the tape measure and it's about nine mil so I don't need to trim these. It's perfect. <laughs> that looks banging. I'm a big fan of that. And uh, yeah, nine mil shorter, so that's sick. And then we have it. Both installed, adjustment maxed out. So, should be better than before. I can tell just by looking at it from like this distance that the tow was much better. I also just took it for a quick drive 
and it's driving much straighter. It's still pulling a little bit, but way, way better drive. Holy shit. Hell yeah. Though I feel like now, because of the camber adjustment being in so much, um, the rears are gonna be the ones growing out, so alignment's still obviously necessary, but yeah. So, in typical Isaac fashion, I mentioned at the start of the video, I had a bunch of things I wanted to do before we went camping. Well, we're going camping tomorrow and I haven't done anything. So, I'm pretty much just down here, um, about to start packing. Uh, I'm gonna empty what I don't need in the car and yeah, should be good. Oh yeah, that is comfy as hell. Oh boy, I'm gonna enjoy this one. You can kind of see where I've got my foam swag mattress for the side that I'm gonna sleep on. So, yeah. Yeah, all in all, I'm pretty cozy, I'm not gonna lie. This is um, quite comfy. I can definitely see myself just like, have my tablet chill here, watch movies, just flip it down. And what I've just ordered is, uh, I got the Dometic Waco 8 litre center console replacement, it's 12 volt, so I'll just plug into my 12 volt there, I'll have better cup holders and a little fridge, jump, there you go, atta boy, just gonna drop this little fella off with my parents for the weekend, good boy, <laughs> good boy, hey, good boy, gross. And out comes the center console table. Okay, so I got the Dometic Waco center console, plugged it in, and it was dead. So the only one they had left for the center console was the Engel one, E-N-G-E-L. So that's what I got. Exact same size, eight liters, plenty of space, new cup holders, same little tab back here, and has both heat and cool features heat cool so yeah that's that done and then I got my little portable food heater box here which uh, will stay in the back get up stretch my legs you ready bro yes sir you ready to go bro oh, yeah. there you go bro get out of my face Come back. Come back. Yeah. <laughs> it's so cute. Shut up. Oh. What's your favorite thing about your mum's cooch? Uh, I don't want to answer that at all. Pussy. That I came out of.
<laughs> no wiggling, no wiggling, no oh! wiggling. No, fuck, he's, oh, got, he's, it. Got, he's got, got it. He's got it. <laughs> Holy shit. Okay. You have to keep that now. Okay. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Alright, so it's 6 a.m. We're all gonna get up. Go to Gardner's Falls. I think I'm the first one to wake up so far. Oh. You feeling down there, young Lachlan? Hey man. <laughs> it was so much better tonight you... than last night. Was it? Can you see me through that? I know. Barely. You're like kind of moving. <laughs> oh, it's cold as hell. Yeah. Uh... Wakey, wakey, mister. He is awake. Wait. This camper trip ain't ended, man. It's like another full day. Do drugs? <laughs> How's it going guys? So we're back from the camping trip now, just taking care of a couple of little things on the CRV. Um, as I mentioned a few times while we're away, uh, that lower control arm is starting to bother me, like a lot. There's a lot of play at that bushing. I'm gonna wear out another steering rack and all sorts of broken shit if I don't take care of that. So I'm gonna go to the wreckers later the Sarvo. But now what I've just decided to do is I really want to wire back up my um, UHF and see how these LEDs do in my fog light grill. So in last episode, or the episode before, I think it was last episode, I don't know. Anyway, I pulled out that wiring harness for the roof light. Good thing is, as with the other wiring harness I have, it's a um, dual channel one. So I'm going to go ahead and cut that connector off. I'm going to put some ring terminals on wire it up to my battery and um, yeah chuck some spade terminals on these instead of ring terminals and then I'll be able to test those and have my UHF once again should be sweet alrighty so gone ahead and um, crimped those wires together um, electrical tape over all the connectors run it to here I don't have any ring terminals to crimp to the ends here so I can't connect it today do a J car run tomorrow one thing that I was having an issue with was with the um, pod filter. I was really struggling to get this K&N pod filter in and out just because of how long the um, silicon tubing was on the inside. So I just trimmed maybe like 
eight centimeters off that and now I can get it in and out nice and easy. All right, so out here at the wreck is just getting that lower control arm needed. Looked at a few options, but this one has the least play and by the least I mean zero which I mean is better than the rest. So I'm gonna pull this one and see how it is. Well, I probably should have seen this one coming. So I'm uh, down here, put it all apart. Got the lower control arms dangling here. Swaling, free spinning, should have seen that coming. Alrighty, so that one's all pulled out now. Didn't end up using a hex key, just gave it a little twisty and um, as these old Honda swalings do it just Pop the plastics out of um, the ball off the ball joint, um, and yeah. So now that I'll put in the Savo. Those bushings are so much better condition than mine. Take mine out, order some hard race ones, and then yeah, replace all the bushings with brand new ones. But for now, I just need to be able to drive my car safely again. So yeah, that's going in. So under the car, we've got it on a stand here. Um, I just wanted to come in and show you guys why I actually need to replace this because look how much play there is just because of this one bushing. That is crazy, man. That is so not okay. So yeah, look at that bolt. It's even rotating because of the play. I figured before I crawl under my car, considering it's just covered in CV grease, um, I should give it a little spray down and obviously dirt and shit because I was just camping. So, yeah. I do wish I had the motivation to clean this thing more often because damn it just does look so much better. Not gonna lie, I was half expecting that to strip the um, hex thread. Um, it was already loose because I gave it the old ugga dugga. Well, if I wasn't confident about my subframe drop before, I definitely am now because that did not drop down at all. Now granted, that bushing is a little bit lower than it should be, but the fact that my spacer spring all bolt up to the factory without me having to do my weird little like strut fork trick that uh, I showed you in the first lift guide I posted, clip. So you can see, pressing that together like that and press. Yeah, without that trick, um, I wouldn't have been able to do this before, but now I can just bolt it right back up. And that's, again, only a one inch drop. So that's actually quite mint. Okay, so I've got the old one out there. That's the um, bush that was worn out. I've just gone in, degreased all and cleaned up in here. Um, I wanna get as much life out of this as I can. Realistically, this should only be in for two to four weeks while I wait for the bushings to arrive and then press them in. Um, I'm gonna replace every bushing on the old arm and also give it a fresh coat of paint and everything. Um, just tidy it up. So there we are. No more movement. Even though I'm not super confident on that um, subframe thread, at least there's no more play, so that's better than it was. Alright guys, that'll wrap us up for this one, so gone ahead and finished up that LCA um, replacement. Uh, the downside to not doing the bushing, as I expected, did some damage. The subframe thread is kind of fucked, so while the bushing makes it drive a million times better, it's still not great now, because that bolt isn't tightening fully. Same with my rear subframe, so I need both my subframes replaced at some point. They're gonna hold for now, but yeah, fuck that one up, I guess. But on the upside, it's steering and driving and handling much better. Like, I can immediately feel the difference in response. Obviously, the, I can tell the tire's not moving around on the road anymore. Like, when it goes over a bump, it's not jittering to the side. And, that was something I could feel before. That's what I was stressed about on the drive to Balloomba. Anyway, with that all said and done, that'll wrap this one up. I'm glad I got to go back out camping. Uh, it was fun to do something to celebrate my birthday. I haven't really done anything for a few years. Thanks for watching. If you liked what you liked, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down and just get out of here. We don't want you. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.